Hello, today we'll be going over the problem censoring from the 2015 February bronze contest. And a brief overview of the problem is that uh, Farmer John has taken the text from a magazine and um, that we call S, so it's a string S that has every single character from the magazine, um, S being at most 10 to the sixth characters in length, and he wants to remove all the occurrences of some substring that is less than 100 characters, so he's basically censoring that. And yeah, we want to find what the final string would be without any of those characters. So let's take a look at the input. We're given um, what the mo mu fun um, as s, and then we're given t as mu. So if we let me actually just copy this. Um, so we have what the mo move fun. And so we're trying to censor the string mu. And when we look at it, first thing we see is this right here. So we take this out and we're left with what? And since we've taken it out, we see that um, we have mu again. So we can take this out, and then what? And yeah. So this would be the resulting string after we've censored out the string mu. Um, so how do we do this right now? Well, given string. T, uh, string s, we basically just loop through, and anytime we found mu, then we deleted it. So if we look at this one, we looked at what the mo mu fun, we deleted mu, and then we were left with what the mu fun. And then all we have to do is loop through again, and then delete mu from this string again, and we're left with what the fun. Um, and yeah, so this solution works in our sample case, but if we take a look, we're given that, oh, sorry, that's the wrong problem. We're given that um, S is at most 10 to the sixth characters, uh, which is a million. And yeah, potentially we might have to loop through this. Um, if we think about it, it would be, so, S is at most 10 to the 6th. Um, the max would be around 8.5 times 10 to the 8th. Why is that? Or wait, not 8.5, sorry. 5 times 10 to the 8th. Seems like the grammar thing is getting away. Um, and how many times do we have to loop through? So this is when we have to calculate the, I guess, O notation time complexity. Um, in this case, we had to loop through S once to find the mu, and then we had to find S, loop through S again. So, um, but we were left with what the fun with no more moves, but let's think about the case where it was just all Uh, actually, I'm not sure if this would work. Something like this, where we look at this, we take out mu, and then, so we do s, and we take out mu again, so that's plus s, and we have to take out mu again, so that's plus s. And if we look at it, s was um, length 9, and mu is length 3, so that's 3, and we have to basically loop through s three times. Or in other words, we're going to have to loop through s over t at most, let's say, the worst case scenario. Um, so the size of the string over the size of the substring. And we have to do that. We have to loop through the entire string, so s times. So that's potentially s squared over t. And we're given that s is at most 10 to the 6th. Um, and we're squaring that. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure why. I'm and then over t, which is almost 100, and that's well, well over the max.
So yeah, um, our current solution, um, it works with our hands, but not with uh, bigger sized test cases. So um, we have to figure out a way to somehow avoid overshooting the time limit. And yeah, so, so yeah, so how can we somehow shorten the time complexity? How can we avoid having to loop and do this, this S squared over T time complexity? Um, and so I guess the hint I have is if we're given what, mu, no mu, fun. Um, let's say we're building this string. Let's say we're, we're building the final string. So we have W, and that obviously does not have a um, mu. And then we can put what, and then the, and then we have M, and then O, and then M, and then O, and then O. So as we're kind of, we can think of as building the final answer, we discover that we have a mu here. So we, let's take this out. We're given what the mu mo. And then we have another O here. So we put an O and we find that we have mu again at the end. So we can take this out. So now we're left with what the, and then we can put fun. And so what we did here is basically we're adding each character one at a time, and then we're checking if the end part has, contains the, or is equivalent to the substring we're trying to avoid. And yeah, this is kind of like, uh, I kind of explained it very vaguely so that you can try and figure it out by yourself, but if you're still having trouble, I'll go over the implementation in the next video. Thank you for watching.